Uncle Dan, he was my mama's baby brother. He was way well known all over these ridges and hollers. Him and that old fiddle of his, well, they could be heard echoing off the mountains at every barn dance and every corn chucking that was in here nearabouts. But you know, like a lot of the young men up in these hollers, the war between the states came a calling. So Uncle Dan, he cased up that old fiddle and he joined up with the Union Army. What's a lot of our neighbors and kin, you know, they went Confederate. And Uncle Dan, he was a morale booster in the war. He'd come up in old war tents and he'd saw that old fiddle. He'd go in them old makeshift hospitals them old busted up, mangled up soldiers in there. And he'd play that fiddle and he'd stomp his foot. And just for a moment, them old mangled up soldiers, they could forget about the predicament they was in as they listened to Uncle Dan as he sawed off a hole down. In September of 63, Uncle Dan, he was up in Cumberland Gap. That was a bloodless engagement. 2300 Rebs surrendered. As Uncle Dan looked into the faces of them rebels, he didn't see rebels. He didn't see soldiers. He saw neighbors. He saw the sons of his neighbors. Some of them boys were so young, their face and never even saw a whisker. He saw the look of defeat, hunger, and homesick. They only wanted to go home. It's really bothered Uncle Dan. He's right down in amongst them. And he played that old fiddle for them through the night. And as the war raged on, Uncle Dan couldn't get them boys' faces from his mind. In the spring of 64, Uncle Dan, he took a slug in the chest and he went to the veteran reserve for a couple months playing that old fiddle for wounded and imprisoned soldiers. When the conflict finally ended, Uncle Dan could be heard around like before with that echo bouncing off them mountains. Sometimes Uncle Dan, he'd get that sad look. He just couldn't he just couldn't burn that image from his brain. Them, them young, just them boys, them, them neighbor sons, boys he'd seen grow up. He just couldn't get them out of his mind. One night, Uncle Dan was sitting on the steps of the grist mill down the river. And he was playing for some locals. People passing by to stop and listen. Uncle Dan, he just got done sawing off one. And a guy hollered. He said, Dan, how about you saw us off a little of that Cumberland Gap? And just like that, Uncle Dan suddenly remembered the boys' faces, them kids, that scared, homesick look. He stood up and he says, I was right there, boys. I was right there. And he walked away few standing around they clap for Dan and that's one woman could be heard saying God bless you Dan God bless you